Hello folks, and on this week's episode, I'm bringing you a review of the No Name brand by Spraygunner.com, and this is the tiny portable compressor powered by a lithium-ion battery uh, that you can just screw into your airbrush and run it, and uh, we will see if it uh, works as well as the uh, big old boys that we're used to dealing with that have to sit on the floor. Um, the box is really nicely presented. Uh, this particular model comes with a few more bells and whistles than some of them do. Uh, it comes with an extender hose, a charging cable. Uh, I borrowed this off of a friend, so there's a few extra bits and pieces in there. Uh, there's also an airbrush cleaning kit, although I would really not recommend using one like this. And I believe that the uh, the kit actually comes with a cheap airbrush as well, so that you get everything in a single box ready to go. Um, I am going to be using my own airbrushes for this one, uh, and to help with that, I'm going to be adding one additional piece, which is this quick disconnect. I normally use a quick disconnect with my airbrushes, Partly so that I can swap between airbrushes if one clogs or something and I need to kind of keep going. Uh, but actually the main reason that I use a quick disconnect is just so that I don't leave the hose connected to the airbrush. And, you know, then end up tripping and, and pulling the airbrush over and breaking the airbrush. Um, it also really helps if you've got airbrushes by different manufacturers. Uh, because you can kind of get the correct adapter for whichever manufacturer you you have and they all connect to the same quick disconnect i'm using my regular evo uh, harder and steam back evo that i often use for detail work and, and generally use uh, and for this i am connecting it directly to the compressor i'm spraying steinol res black primer initially on a little basket seat that I'm working on for a stop with camel. And here you can hear the noise and hear how it how loud it is compared to my podcast that I have running as you can hear. You can still hear the podcast reasonably well. Uh, but it's uh, it's still not a quiet compressor. So I've got a great Having the compressor plugged directly into the airbrush really can be a little bit frustrating uh, as you have to you have to allow for that additional space it kind of interferes with the way you hold your airbrush as well. So next up I tried attaching the hose to the compressor. I was a little bit concerned about uh, whether this would impact the ability of the compressor to to generate enough pressure for the airbrush. Um, this time around, I'm using Steinol Res Gray Primer. It sprays exactly the same as the black primer, so it's a pretty good comparative test. Applying a quick zenithal to a little British Airman from a old Airfix Hurricane Hawker kit, um, and then onto some of the interior for the the Hawker Hurricane as well. It is a pretty good experience. I actually really could not tell that there was any pressure drop at all having the hose connected to the compressor. Uh, with both of them, the spray was great. Uh, you know, I don't tend to mess with my compressor settings too frequently. I don't adjust the pressure too much. Um, and with this, you can't actually adjust the pressure at all. Uh, but the pressure I was getting out was absolutely fine for all of my needs. Uh, for, for the Steinol Res and the previous one, uh, it was spraying nice and smoothly. Um, I was able to get a good clean zenithal. Uh, so overall, I've, I was pretty happy with the experience up to this point. Uh, but I did want to put this through a little bit more of its paces, and so uh, I wanted to really test how it worked with cleaning. Um, you do want a reasonably strong pressure for, for cleaning your airbrush out, because 
when you're doing the back bubble it really helps dislodge the uh, paint that may have caught inside of the nozzle or around the needle um, and this I, I did feel that the pressure that the compressor was giving out was maybe a little bit low it wasn't much of an issue I was able to clean the airbrush just fine but mm, not quite as easily as I would with my regular compressor. Next up, uh, some regular uh, acrylic, water-based acrylic paint. Um, and I'm going to do a little bit of my own mix for the interior of the Hawker Hurricane. Uh, taking a little bit of this, uh, a little bit of uh, titanium white acrylic ink. And thinning it down just a bit with some water. I did actually thin it down a little bit more than maybe I would have in normal circumstances just to err on the side of safety uh, but it really is not that much of an, a concern especially after I run the Steiner res through it. Uh, primer is probably the most difficult thing uh, to run through an airbrush for me. Uh, it, I don't want to thin it because it impacts its ability to, to do its job. Uh, and the Stunnerous stuff is formulated for an airbrush, but it's still quite thick. Um, and especially through the Evo, which has a smaller nozzle than uh, the Badger Patriot 105, which is my other main airbrush, uh, it's more prone to clogging. And as you saw, I really didn't face any of that kind of issue um, at all. This here is me attempting to reproduce RAF interior green uh, from uh, what paints I have to hand because I don't have a lot in the uh, historical reproduction line of paints from any manufacturer. Um, but Coat d'Arms is a classic paint line that I'm really familiar with. It's basically the same as the old early 90s GW paint and I really enjoy working with it both for brush and for airbrushing thins nicely with water works well with the titanium white acrylic ink pours straight in and uh, airbrushes out really smoothly i uh, got a uh, good coverage uh, after about two passes as i said i thinned the paint a little bit more than i was uh, would perhaps normally have done but there was no spidering, there was no speckling. The, the compressor, compressor pressure really does hit that in between. Uh, so it's a nice smooth coat without any tweaking of uh, the, the settings that it, it provides. Um, as you can see, it's, it's sat on the table and it is running pretty much constantly when air is flowing. It doesn't have a tank, so that's to be expected but really no major issues. Next up, I swapped out my airbrush to the Patriot 105 from Badger, which is a little bit more greedy for air, needs, needs a little bit more airflow. And I also switched to the Vallejo Metal Color line to do some metallic work. Uh, jumped back to parts for my Sopworth Camel for this, so the um, control stick for the aircraft and uh, also the uh, Clerge radial engine from the Sopworth. Uh, spraying, I, I actually, uh, during this session, used a couple different metallics. Uh, I used uh, some gunmetal, steel, uh, aluminium, copper. Really didn't have any issues with any of them. Um, also, you know, they, they are very thin. Uh, paints to begin with but have excellent coverage and sprayed beautifully. Jumping back to my Evo and uh, using just some Vallejo model air straight out of the pot. This is a lot of what I use for airbrushing. Uh, I find model air really nicely thinned for, for airbrushing uses and actually this was the first time I really had issues and I, I think it was not the fault of the compressor at all. It was that I'd clogged the uh, the nozzle with with something at some stage um, but a little bit of back bubbling and uh, I cleared the 
the nozzle clog without too much difficulty and I was able to carry on um, taking a few passes at this this is the the seat for the Sopworth Camel uh, they actually had wicker seats in those early World War One aircraft um, taking a couple of passes running the hairdryer over the the seat in between just to to dry it off quickly and, and allow myself to keep working one of the really nice things that I noticed about this compressor especially in comparison to the compressor that I normally use is that it seems like it's it holds pressure really really well I'm not sure I noticed a single moment where I was not spraying that the compressor ran once it was up to pressure um, you know no weak joints all of the seals seem really really good I'm sure if I left it on uh, for an hour or so it would it would maybe run once or twice but with my other compressor a couple times every minute it, it has to turn back on to, to re-establish the pressure that it's slowly losing through through weak connections and that just wasn't the case with this at all which was quite nice the lifespan of a, a single charge of the compressor I reckon to be about an hour uh, I, I, I ran mine down completely uh, just to see how how long it would last and it, it seems to be about an hour uh, for a single charge which is you know pretty good uh, you know it's, there's not many instances where a, a hobbyist is going to be airbrushing for more than an hour straight unless they're you know maybe trying to crank through an army and I'm not sure that this is really what you would be wanting to use that for uh, you're probably better off using a full compressor for that but if maybe you're traveling to a convention or something and you just want to take your airbrush with you in case you've got an airbrushing class or something like that this really should work absolutely fine uh, the last thing I tested with the compressor was just spraying shooting some acrylic inks really acrylic inks are great for kind of testing if you're going to get speckling um, and and as you can see it, it works pretty well so that is all that I have uh, for this episode I, it's a fantastic product I would highly recommend it uh, if you would like to see more please do subscribe uh, if you are interested in shopping for some hobby supplies please check out Herrick Games and Hobbies uh, link in the description below there's also a discount there for your first purchase or if you want some really nice resin bases check out Elric's Hobbies again the link is in the description below and there's a 10% discount code there as well for any order you place through Elric's Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Later days.